And then the plaster also has the quality of removing moisture. So it will help dry the foot of the pot. It actually evens out the drying process quite a bit. Plus the fact that I'll be able to pick this up without distorting it. So I center the clay. Open it up. Check the depth. I think I know how deep it is. Yeah, too thin. So what I do is I add some clay. Push it down. There. There's a little bubble there. In my early days, I thought the concept of throwing was perfection. And then after watching other people throw, notably my master potter, my master potter is, it's more like correction rather than perfection. You still have to spend a lot of time getting good at doing this. So I pinch the clay. Visualize my fingers like a vise, like a vise grip. I push the clay in and hold it a certain thickness and pull up. And because the clay is lubricated and the clay is plastic, the clay has to go somewhere it not only gets thinner, but starts shaping. So there I lubricated the clay, knuckle under, pull up at a steady pace. Somewhere in my early days I determined also that I couldn't hold my breath <laughs> while I was doing this. Sounds silly, but I wanted to be relaxed. So I worked on it. Worked on my breathing, that is. Again, it's the third time, knuckle under, the inside finger is pushing against the knuckle, making it thinner, and the thickness is determined by the use of a lot of practice. Start to trim the foot. And these uh, these are wood tools that I've made myself. And for illustration's sake, I'm going to push my needle in. Wait. Touch my finger on the inside, slide my finger up to it to show you it's that thick or thin. Ta -da. What is that, a quarter of an inch? No, Half an inch? Or less. Yeah. Or less. Well, three sixteenths. Okay. So I use this is called a rib, this wood tool. And you can see it helps put a final shape. Moves out the surface, takes some of the throwing marks out. And I like the throwing marks, but I don't want them to dominate over the, the brushwork that I'm going to be putting out here shortly. Already 
first input. This is a cock I'm loaded with a, a white porcelain. That will serve as an accent at the top. Hi. In the studio. Oh, good. Green. I was hoping you would do green. It's very dramatic. This is a green slip. You might think of this as a paint. It's not, not really called paint, it's called a slip because it's clay. And it carries color, uh, meaning this is rutile. This is a non colored clay, although it's whitish, it's a porcelain. And it adds texture. You can see the texture of the brush. And if it runs, I catch it. And this particular slip, the uh, colorant is um, chrome, chrome oxide. So that when I put a glaze over it, it will turn green. And this is an accent color, it's very dark blue-black. Sometimes these colors will merge and almost disappear. It's definitely that first porcelain I put on this, oops, this one is transparent. And the second one, this, this one is opaque. So what I get is a layer of this whitish and some dimension and a strong contrast. It actually does form a, a ridge on the, on the completed piece. Too much of a good thing right there. <laughs> the great invention of the 21st century, the foam brush. Well, <coughs> foam brush. Yes. Very, all very all mistakes can be erased with a foam brush. And this final, I have a metal comb. This I just formed. This particular shape happens to match the curve of my thumb. And I put notches in there with it using a file. And the comb, as you can see, supplies texture. A little more definition to whatever is happening on the surface of the clay, design-wise. So I'm, I'm using color and texture. This is no different than painting in that you start with a background and you work toward a final result.